In this session, we'll be taking a more detailed look at the revert command, specifically how we revert added files. If you've not already done so, change your current working directory so that you're in the root of the MO3L10 working copy that comes with the course pack. Taking a quick survey of this working copy by doing a directory listing, we see that there are a number of files and directories already populated in the working copy. And the info command informs us that this working copy is mapped to the trunk directory within the MO3L10 repository. Furthermore, we can see we're synchronized with revision 33 in the repository. In order to show a revert of an added file, the first thing we need to do is create a file. So using Notepad or your favorite text editor, create a file called undo.txt. It doesn't matter what you put in this file, we're just going to use it for an addition example. Save the file and then use the svn add command to schedule this file to be added the next time we commit. Then we use the status command to confirm that the only thing scheduled in this working copy is indeed the undo.txt edition. A directory listing of our current working directory confirms that the undo.txt now exists. We're now ready to demonstrate the details of using the revert command. So we issue the svn revert command specifying undo.txt as the target. The revert command will undo the scheduled change to undo.txt, in this case the scheduled addition. The output of the revert command confirms that it has in fact reverted the file undo.txt. Repeating the status command on our working copy, we now see a question mark next to the undo.txt. This is reporting that the subversion client sees undo.txt as an unversioned file. It's especially important to notice that the revert command when undoing an add operation, simply unschedules it. The file, which is the target of the revert, is not touched in any way. Undo.txt remains identical before and after the revert. The only thing we've done is remove the subversion working copy marker that requested that the undo.txt file be added the next time we commit this working copy to the repository. A directory listing on our current working directory further confirms that the undo.txt remains in place and looking at the modified date and timestamp and the size of the file, we can see that it remains untouched. Okay, let's clean up by deleting the undo.txt in preparation for the next revert command. In this session, we take a look at the revert command and its use in reverting a modification to a file. The first thing that we need to do is make a modification to an existing file. The file copyme.txt already exists in this working copy and is a version controlled file. So, using Notepad or your favourite text editor, edit the copyme.txt file. Now, I'm just going to make a quick change to this. I'm going to replace a few lines with a single line reporting that I've deleted a few lines. It really doesn't matter what modification you make, as long as you make some changes to the file so that the subversion client sees the file as being modified. Using the svn status command, we can confirm that the copyme.txt is now seen by the subversion client as being modified. The M in the first column of the output confirms this. Using the msdos type command, we'll list out the contents of the copyme.txt that we've just created by modifying the file. There we can see, in my case, the second line now reads delete a few lines. We'll now use the revert command to revert or undo the modification to copyme.txt. The command confirms that we have in fact reverted the file copyme.txt and using the svn status command again, we can confirm that there are no outstanding actions against this working copy. The modification has been reverted. Using the type command, we can see that the copyme.txt file's content has been restored to what it was when it was last updated into this working copy. In this case, looking at the illustration to the right in the working copy area, you can see that the copyme.txt file has been restored to revision 16. The important point here is that the revert command is doing more than simply removing the modification marker within the working copy. It's also restoring the copyme.txt file to its previous condition. Copyme.txt has been restored to what we call the base version. 
the base version of all the files in a working copy are maintained within the .svn directory, the hidden directory which is used by the subversion client. The reasons for doing this are very simple. One of the design objectives of subversion was to allow many operations to be performed without being connected to a repository. In this case, the reversion of modified files is performed entirely locally. There's no need for the system to refer back to the repository. This means that when working disconnected from the repository, the revert command will still restore the file back to its base version. It does this by referencing the metadata directory within the working copy. In order to demonstrate the reversion of a deleted file, the first thing we need to do is delete a file. Because revert only works on version controlled files, we need a version controlled file to be deleted. Copyme.txt is a version controlled file that exists within our current working copy. So using the svn remove command, we're going to delete the copyme.txt file. A subversion status command confirms that the copyme.txt file is scheduled for deletion within this working copy and a directory listing confirms that the copyme.txt file has been removed from this directory. Issuing the subversion revert command specifying copyme.txt reports that we have in fact reverted the copyme.txt file. The svn status command confirms that the deletion is no longer scheduled to occur, and a directory listing confirms that the copyme.txt file has been restored to our current working copy. It's important to note that the subversion revert command works entirely locally. There is no reference made back to the controlling repository. This is possible because the subversion client maintains copies of what we refer to as the base version of all files within the .svn metadata directory. When reverting a deleted file, it is this metadata which is referred to and the copyme.txt file is restored from the copy held within the .svn directory. This feature is particularly useful if you work disconnected from your repository for long periods of time. In order to demonstrate the reversion of deleted directories, we're going to need a version controlled directory to delete. Looking at the copy DIR, we see that we have a directory with a significant amount of structure in it. It contains files and directories and subdirectories and so on. Using the subversion remove command, we can remove this directory. And as you can see from the output of the remove command, not only is the copy directory itself scheduled for deletion, but so are all its files and directories. Using the subversion status command, we can confirm that the only actions scheduled against this working copy are the deletion of the copy directory, its files and its directories. Doing a directory listing of the copy DIR now reveals that only the directories are left behind. All of the files have been physically removed, but the directories remain behind. Although the directories are marked for deletion, Subversion cannot remove the directories at this time because they contain the hidden .svn directories holding the metadata. As you recall from the previous revert command examples, the .svn metadata contains the base versions of all the files held within a directory. If the subversion client were to remove the directories, the .svn directories holding the metadata would be removed also. This would mean that the subversion client would have to refer back to the repository to obtain the copies of the directories to restore if we were to revert those directories. To avoid this problem, directories are not themselves removed by a delete operation. In fact, the directory and the .svn directory that it contains remain behind even though they're scheduled for deletion. Let's restore our copy DIR by performing a revert. The command confirms that we have in fact reverted copy DIR. Looking at a directory listing of copy DIR now, we note that only the directories exist. The files that exist directly within copy DIR, specifically a new copy.txt and file.txt, as shown in the working copy illustration to the right, still remain deleted and still remain scheduled for deletion. The revert command does not, by default, operate recursively. So when we asked SVN revert to revert copy DIR, that's precisely what it did. It reverted the deletion scheduled against the copy DIR itself. 
This is easily confirmed with the subversion status command. Note that all of the contents of copydir, files and directories are still scheduled for deletion, but copydir itself is no longer on the list. Copydir itself has been reverted. In order to restore copydir and its content, we need to perform the revert operation specifying the depth option. In this case, the depth option is set to infinity. This will cause the revert command to work recursively through the entire copydir structure. This time the revert command reports that it's reverting all of the files and all of the directories contained within copydir. A simple status command confirms that we now have no scheduled deletions in this working copy. And looking at the directory copydir, we can observe that the files have been restored. Similarly, looking at the copydir subdirectory, we can see that these files have also been restored. So, a revert command using the depth option set to infinity will restore the entire structure. The files that have been restored have been restored in exactly the same way as when we reverted a delete command on the file itself. A copy has been taken from the .svn directory that is hidden within each of the directories and the working copy. This is the reason why the directories cannot be deleted as part of the delete command. When restoring deleted directories, we can use the depth command to good effect. Let's re-delete the copy dir. In this case, I'm using the full delete command. This is identical to the rm command we used earlier. It's just a different name for the same command. So we can see the copy dir is now scheduled for deletion, as are all its files and directories. Using the revert command, but this time specifying a depth option with the value files, we can restore the copy dir and its file content, but none of its directories. The revert command output confirms the items that have been reverted. And now, looking at the subversion status of our working copy, we can see that the only things scheduled for deletion are the subdirectories of copy dir and the files that they contain. Doing a directory listing on copy dir confirms the fact that a new copy.txt and file.txt have been restored as we would expect. But doing a directory listing on the sub dir subdirectory from copy dir confirms that no files have been restored into this directory. In fact, as can be seen in the status command above it, the copy dir sub dir remains scheduled for deletion. Looking once again at the status of our working copy, we can see that the copy dir subdirectories and the files they contain remain scheduled for deletion. We can extend the effect of our revert command slightly by specifying a depth option of immediates. The output of the command confirms that the two subdirectories, subdir and moved, have now been reverted. And repeating the status command confirms that the only things left scheduled for deletion are the directories contained within those subdirectories. Doing a directory listing on copy dir, we see that nothing has substantially changed. Similarly, looking at the copy dir of the subdirectory, its contents, file1.txt, remain deleted. The immediate value specified to the depth option causes revert to restore the contents immediately within the copy dir, or more generally, immediately within the path specified to the revert command. Finally, we see once again the infinity value specified to the depth option of the revert command, and this time the revert command continues to restore files and directories to an infinite depth, recursing through the entire copy dir structure. The status command confirms that there are no scheduled operations on this working copy. We've restored all of the deletions. A directory on copy dir reveals that the files and directories remain restored. And now, looking at the copy dir subdirectory, we see that the file1.txt has in fact been restored. It's an important feature of the revert command that if it encounters a file or directory which is already effectively in its base condition, that is, in the condition that it was last updated to in our working copy, it simply skipped over. And that's what allows us to repeat the revert command several times on copy dir, specifying different values to the depth option. We've gradually increased the depth to which the copy dir has been restored, but each time the revert command has simply seen that the copy dir has already been restored, skips over it, and continues to revert the working copy until the relevant depth is reached.